Hello everybody and welcome to episode 34. We're going to be taking a bit of a strange detour this episode from we've we've just set up our, our collectible objects, our coins that can be absorbed into us, and today we're actually going to be making these bombs. Okay, I want to get another item that eventually we'll be able to get ammo for and collect so that we can carry on with the collect stuff, so I'm going to go into our bomb item today. Um, it's kind of a fun one to create. Um, Again, this is going to be another thing in sort of two parts as well, because we're just going to make the bomb itself today, which is this item. You see, we can pick it up and throw it, have it break on throw, but they also sort of explode after um, a certain duration has passed. They they flash red for a little bit, and then boom, and then they destroy things around them. They would also hurt the slime if we were anywhere close enough. In fact, I think I can just throw it at him to prove that. There we go. Um, so that's what we're going to make today. Before we get started, I want to make some changes to our P entity object. Now our project's starting to get like a bit beefy. We've got a lot of like things and um, like folders to click through and so on. Um, so I'm going to start just using Control T to get to our different objects rather than going through the asset browser. Something that becomes more and more useful the bigger your project gets. So I'm just going to press Control T. This will come up. I'll type P entity, press Enter, and we get straight to P entity. Okay, so um, it's very useful. Um, in the create event. Um, you see where we do U flash for our um, to get the uniform for our flash shader. You might remember we did some stuff in our player to allow them to flash red, where we made another shader, and then we just use a variable to point at which shader we want to use at any point. We're basically going to set that up inside of a P entity as well, so we can change uh, change the shader kind of on the fly. Um, I'm going to do that in a very simple way. Just above U flash, I'm going to write flash shader, the same variable I used for the player, um, and set that to equal sh white flash. That's our default one. And then a new flash under here, we can just copy and paste flash shader over where we wrote sh white flash before. Um, so it's just going to get whatever is is in that variable, okay? And then basically, whenever we want to change um, a shader from now on, we can just call these two lines. Like anywhere, say we want to swap the red flash for some reason, we can just call those two lines. It'll be just sh red flash, and then and then make sure you do this again so that it's actually getting the uniform from the correct shader. Otherwise, it won't work. All right. Um, the other thing we need to change obviously is go to draw and instead of doing shader set white flash, set it to flash shader. Okay, so it's getting the right one. You might want for a little ease of use if you don't necessarily want to remember to do you flash shader get uniform every time. Um, just just put that in here, I guess. You could put the, the shader get uniform like there uh, to make sure you get that uniform and, you, and you're setting it correctly every time. It'll save you then... Um, like pasting both those lines if you want to change it. Um, I don't really mind if, you know, it's a, a, a tiny, super trivial, probably not worth it optimization to just, you know, uh, just get it once. Um, but you, you can do that. And in fact, I think that's what we even do in our player. I'll, I'll leave that decision up to you. Um, you can do it either way. Yeah, our player does it, so it sets the shader, then gets the uniform. Um, I think generally speaking, I'd actually prefer doing it this way. In fact, yeah, I've changed my mind. I'm going to do it that way. <laughs> I'm going to paste that in there as well. And then that means you can actually just change the shader just by do, uh, changing whatever is in flash shader. Um, in theory, this is like like trivially like less optimal, right? Because it means we're actually getting the uniform every single time. And we, don't we, we only really want to get the uniform if we've actually changed shader. Um, but, you know, it's so trivial, it's such a minor thing that saving you the headache of remembering to get the uniform when you want to change the shader is probably worth it. <laughs> like, you know, that's that's sometimes a lot of the cost um, benefit you have to weigh up. Like, uh, how much of a headache it's going to cause you as a programmer and how much it's going to impact your performance. It's all, quite often those two things come hand in hand. And uh, often I err on the side of minimizing the headache. All right, that's uh, already way too much time spent on that. Let's move on. We're going to bring in a couple of new sprites. So I'm going to right click in sprites and hit create sprite from images. I'm going to bring in S bomb strip four from my assets folder. Um, S bomb is what I'm going to call it. And you can see it's literally just a little sparking bomb thing that I made. Um, you might want to make it more, I don't know, some people might prefer to like make a whole animation where it like ticks down, but then you've got to like do some code for that and so on, and I couldn't be bothered. So mine just sort of fizzes at the top and then just explodes after an arbitrary amount of time passes. You can do yours however you want. Um, so that's my S-bomb sprite. Um, hang on, what is that? 50, uh, 30, I think that's about right. Or maybe 15. Yeah, I might prefer to 15 there. Um, oh, the other thing as well, of course, move the origin uh, down to somewhere in the bottom middle. 615 is fine. Um, and then I'm going to add another sprite. 
uh, this one is going to be uh, S Explode. This is a bit more of a fancy sprite. You might just want to copy mine from the assets folder, but um, if you do want to make your own, I literally used um, a sprite from like uh, I think it's like like a uh, one of the two D Zelda games that's sort of stylized after Wind Waker. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but um, the bombs kind of look like this, um, and I thought it looked really nice, so I basically just emulated it as closely as I could. Um, that's what I used as my reference, um, and it came out really well, actually. Like, I did, I did a pretty good job. The main, the main reason I always use a reference for bomb explosions and stuff like that when I'm making them, because like I, I can never get my head around how they should like work, and it's like a couple of quick flash, like a quick flash at the start, and then a big sudden boom, right? Because they're such fast things that I, it's, it's, I find it harder. Uh, not being a very good animator to so, like wrap my head around like how it works, but there's like two, like the the one I used as reference had like a couple of stages of flashes, so I used that. So it's like a, like a little flash and a big bang, and then it like comes in and bangs again, and then just like it's replaced by just like a puff of smoke that comes out afterwards. And I think we reduced this one down to 15 FPS as well, like that, and it just like explodes. Then the important thing here is to get the origin right and you kind of want to put this I think I have it somewhere where is it say I wrote this in my script hang on while I check the script 2440 <laughs> okay I uh, move this down to 2440 for me yeah so it's going to want to be somewhere like here because you want to just think about like obviously the origin of my bomb is in like bottom middle so my bomb is going to take up like this kind of space right if I zoom right in my bomb is going to be like here right because of that origin so you got to think about just positioning your origin roughly with respect to where your bomb is going to be so that the explosion makes sense when it comes out on top of it okay and then obviously just make sure that's called s explode and we are done with the explosion now we're going to make the bomb entity itself so just in our entities here i'm going to make a new object and we're going to call it o bomb and we're going to assign it the correct sprite, S bomb. We're going to make it a child of P entity. Just all very basic stuff so far. We'll zoom in a little here because um, despite how ugly it sometimes looks when you zoom in, um, <laughs> it might help you see what we're doing. Um, down here, we're going to want to set a couple of these uh, variable definitions um, up so that our bomb is kind of properly configured. Um, entity activate script is going to be activate liftable because we want to be able to pick up the bomb that's what we want to happen when we interact with it um, entity activate arguments um, in the square brackets is going to be id because it's going to pass itself into that that's how liftable works remember from our parts um, entity shadow well, we'll mark as true it's going to want a shadow eventually so we'll just leave that on it might be the wrong size but um, we, we want it on because we want to see like the curve and stuff when we throw the object um, and entity throw break I'm going to set to true. You might want to leave this off, up to you. I mean, some people might prefer bombs that you just you, you move around, but they, all, they always go off at the, the predetermined time. I kind of like the game feel of when you throw the bomb, it instantly explodes wherever it lands. Um, I don't know, it just it makes it feel a bit like a rocket launcher or something. I don't know, it just it feels good. <laughs> I like the way that feels, uh, gameplay-wise. Um, I can understand why you might not, like in like Zelda or whatever, you know, you, you, it doesn't happen that way. Like you pick up bombs, you throw them, but they still, um, they, they just, you're just moving them around. Um, they go off when they go off. But I like this as a way of being able to vary when the bomb goes off. You can pick it up um, and throw it, um, and then it's just it's going to blow up wherever it lands. Um, up to you, though. I think that's everything we need to do in here. So I'm going to come now to uh, the events list. And we're going to inherit the create events. I'm going to right click on create and hit inherit. Um, get rid of this at the top. Maximize this. Give it some space. Um, and in here, what we want to do is do a flash shader equals sh red flash. Um, in theory, <laughs> in my script, I had it to, to do uh, u flash equals that, but I guess we don't need to do that now. Um, because I've, I've put that in the draw step. So just set flash shader to the sh red flash. And then bomb stage is going to equal zero. Bomb tick rate 
is going to equal a big array. Now bear with me a second. We're going to do a square bracket 60, comma, 60, comma, 60, comma, 30, comma, 30, comma, 30. Just copy this down afterwards if you're not following. Comma, 30, copy 10, comma, 10, comma, 10, uh, comma, 10, comma, 10, comma, 10, comma, minus 1. The pauses there were me just referring to my script. Um, and then bomb tick is going to equal bomb tick rate zero. So what we've done there is we've just made a big array with a ton of values in it. Um, value zero is 60, and then 60, 60, 30, 30, 30, 30, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, minus one. You might, just from the name bomb tick rate, be able to work out what this means. Um, this is the, the distance between flashes, okay? So it's going to flash red. Um, like, and then it's going to wait 60 frames, it's going to flash again, wait 60 frames, flash again, wait 30 frames, 30 frames, 30 frames, 30 frames, then 10 frames, then 10 frames, then 10 frames. So it's going to flash faster and faster as time goes on, uh, basically in like three stages. Um, and then when we get to here, we're going to want to explode, right? Um, that That's basically how it's going to work. All right, I hope that makes sense. I think it's fairly straightforward. So with that done, um, come out with that, uh, we can go to the, uh, oh, we, actually that's the end step event. We're just going to add a regular step event into here. We'll maximize that again. Um, even though we don't have a parent event, I'm going to write event inherited anyway, um, just in case at some point in the future, RP entity gets its own step event. Um, it's generally a good practice. If you're making child objects of something and you're adding um, uh, events to them that the parent doesn't have. Uh, write event inherited anyway, unless you know what you're doing, uh, you, unless you know specifically why you would not want to do that. Um, it's a good idea to just write it anyway, just to make sure that when you add code to the parent, it's going to um, filter through to all of the child objects, okay? And it's not like, oh, wait, yeah, I forgot I wrote this one's own event and it's not inheriting it and so on. Um, I find it uh, good to just do event inherited um, again, even when there's nothing there for that reason. Um, I don't know if it's strictly good. I don't know. It, it feels like good practice to me to do that um, from my own experience. Um, you do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> event inherited. And then if not global dot game paused. Also generally a good thing to keep writing in uh, if in doubt. Um, because we don't want things to carry on when our game is paused. Uh, assuming the game is not paused, uh, every step we're going to do a bomb tick minus minus. And then if uh, bomb tick, which you'll remember is set to um, the first entry of that array. So this is currently 60. So if bomb tick ever equals exactly zero, uh, flash is going to equal 0.75, which will work with RP entity code to cause the flash to happen. Uh, bomb stage is going to increase and then bomb tick is going to equal bomb tick rate bomb stage. Okay, so it's going to go to the next entry of the array. So after 60 frames, we're going to go to the next entry, which is 60. And then we're going to go to the next entry, which is 60. Then the next one, which is 30, then 30, then 30, then 30 then 10, then 10, then 10, then 10, and so on, right? Okay, um, so Assuming the game is not paused, this will tick down over time. That's all working. And then we want to say if bomb tick is ever less than zero, because the only time that would ever happen uh, is when we've gotten to the last entry of the array, which is minus one. OK, uh, so when we get to that last entry, the first thing I'm going to do here, this might seem weird, is do y minus equals z. Um, it's actually going to force the um, bomb onto the floor um, just in case it's in mid-air as the bomb goes off. You might, I don't know, maybe you're okay with that, but I think it, it can behave and feel kind of weird if it explodes in mid-air and the bomb explosion is in the air and the shadows and because of the way our kind of fake height stuff works. So I'm just going to force it to the ground um, if it is not because it's just going to take whatever our Z is. Remove it from our Y and then that's going to um, uh, force it to the ground. And then I'm going to say if lifted as well, um, just in case we happen to be carrying this object when it explodes, uh, with O player, uh, global dot I lifted equal no one. So we just uh, get the player out of that that state. 
um, and then instance destroy. Okay. Oh, but then, of course, I forget. This is why I regret not making a script for dropping an object that does this automatically. Um, global lifted equals no one, but also sprite idle equals s player, and then sprite run equals s player run. Okay, so we set those sprites back to normal. In fact, you know what? It won't take long. I might just do that now. Um, uh, where, 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 what, would, what would it be? Like player general? Yeah, we'll just make a new script in here that's like player drop item. Um, get rid of this. And we'll just do that. Uh, we'll just copy this with O player. Global I lifted equals no one. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Don't know why we did with O player to do global. Is that what? Whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You don't obviously you don't need to with the player to change a global, but we did need to do with the player to change these, so whatever, we can just leave it in. Um The reason I'm making this is because now I can just call this instead uh whenever whenever uh we need to unlift something, right? We could now go through the code and like you know refactor and put that in wherever we've done it, but just having it for now going forward is just gonna save us time. It it doesn't matter about going in and swapping that all in or whatever just for the sake of cleanness okay um i'm just putting that in for now um so that should actually like for the most part work obviously we're not going to have an explosion the bomb is just going to explode but um if i run the game and realize i haven't actually put any bombs in the game world and then come to the game world and actually put some bombs um in the game world let's just pop some around put some sort of near the grass like i did before and that will be helpful when they explode later to show that they're working. See the bombs flashing. You see what we can pick them up, throw them, have them break, and also boom, 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 boom. Um, that's all good. Um, they all work just as we expect. So it goes like every 60 frames, then every 30 frames, and then eventually every 10, and then they blow up. You can play with that array and change it to numbers that you feel better. Maybe you wanted to get like certainly different each time rather than like kind of like I've done it in like three big distinct stages the 60 frame stage and the 30 tick stage then 10 and so on maybe you want to go like 60 55 50 or whatever you know you do it however you want play around with it see uh, get it feeling however you want it to feel last but not least we're going to make the explosion so let's close this uh, close the village room and I'm gonna make a new object um called um o explode set the sprite accordingly um to s explode wherever i put that there it is um this doesn't need to be a parent of anything this is just a simple effect that we're going to call um what we're going to do first is in the create event write collision history equals ds list creates open right close bracket and then in the step event, I'm actually just going to copy and paste in a huge chunk of code. Um, I'll explain it in a second. So I'm just going to copy, paste in this. All right. It's kind of a lot. Um, I'll go through it a little. The reason I don't want to go through this like line by line is because it's mostly identical to our attack scripts and stuff, right? Just our working out, getting a big list of things. Um, checking for a collision there, going through each one of them, being like, is this an entity? You know um hurt that enemy or if it has a hit script do a thing okay it's exactly the same as that okay the only key differences here are um are that um if image index is less than four is being checked before we do any of this um that's to make it so you know um only those first few frames of the explosion are actually going to have the possibility to damage something so every frame as long as the image index is less than four um so assuming it's uh, hasn't reached this frame yet, so it's still on one of these like blasty blasty frames, um, we can do damage. We don't want it to be able to do damage in this stage where it's just like a smoke puff coming up. Or maybe you do, up to you, but I don't. So I put this in as a check. Um, oh, this is outdated actually. Oh, this is from a different way I did this before. Uh, this should just read image speed equals 1.0. And then we're going to else at the end... Uh, image speed equals 0 0.0 okay um that's just to make it so it animates while the game is not paused and doesn't animate while um 
there while it is paused. Okay. I, um, I'll, I want to keep the font big so you can read, but I'll just bring that down here and I'll just leave that on the screen for a couple of seconds so that you can pause here while you get all this down. I hope it's reasonably clear how it all works because we have been through it all before just in terms of um, checking uh, collisions. The only other thing I suppose is I think we're doing a collision history here. I'm not sure we did that. So what I'm doing there is um, obviously we created this collision history DS list here and that DS list um, exists um, for the full duration of the the explosion um and it's it's basically every time we actually hit something in here we add that something to the collision history list and every time we would hit something we check to see if it is on that list and if it is on that list then we don't hit it again that's just to make sure our bomb only hits things the once it doesn't hit things like every single frame over and over and over again okay we do something kind of similar in our attack functions where we like check to see if it hasn't been hit in this frame and so on. But it works in basically the same way. I hope that's reasonably clear. I, just, I didn't want to spend like another like 15 minutes just going over collisions for, for hurting things again. Okay, it's exactly the same. We do hurt enemy and then hit script and so on. All right, hopefully that's clear. Last of all, for our explosion, we're going to add a new event. We can just do it from here. Add open event, um, go to the other section animation end so when the explosion finishes its animation um, we just want to destroy that ds list collision history so we get that out of the way so it's not taking up memory and then just destroy this instance okay that's everything for the explosion itself um we do need to make one last change to o bomb to actually make it create this explosion we're going to right click on destroy um and i'm actually going to hit um override event I zoomed in there and then the context menu is still just really small, making it pointless. Oh well. <laughs> um, but either way, right click on destroy and you hit uh, override event because we don't actually want any of the normal P entity um, fragment stuff or dropping of items for Obomb. We don't need any of that. Um, the only thing we need in here is to actually create an explosion. So I can just type um, instance create uh, depth um, X, Y, so wherever our bomb is. Um, whatever depth we're at, O oh, explode. Okay, that's literally it. So when this gets destroyed, make an explosion in its place. Okay, so assuming I've not forgotten anything, let's hit F5, run this. Our bombs are here, they're ticking. If I pick one up and throw it, it'll blow up early. There we go. And then these ones blow up, and you can see they, they smash all the grass. If I pick up this bomb and throw it at the slime, it'll kill the slime and so on all right simple stuff all right that's everything for this episode um i just wanted to get those bombs in um because i, I want to get to the point where we have a couple of different objects we can pick up and so on and we can start getting the ui on screen that'll show us like the amount of coins we have the amount of bombs we have and that kind of thing and allow different objects to drop from plants and that kind of thing okay so um, forgive me if I'm bouncing around a lot at the moment, I'm just trying to make sure we have the various prerequisites to, to, to bother doing certain other aspects of the tutorial, okay? Bit of a wild ride, but hopefully this was a, a fun episode with a, a, a cool outcome. We've got some cool little flashing bombs, cool explosion effect, and uh, yeah, I think it worked out pretty nicely. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this one, catch you all next time. A huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters who allow me to do what I do, and a huge thanks in particular, and in no particular order, to the following. Mankind1, Josh Furbin, Adrian.exe, Eric Santana, Sean Paul, Gary, Isaac Miller, JDoom986, Darth Wolf, Jake Rumsey, Raymond Harvey, Tranquil, Havig, James Ballard, Gage Hunter, Julian Cropley, Michael Kolich, John Kenai, Stephen Chenier, It's Matt Poor, Rachel Stewart, Arctics, Feral Princess, John C, Team D, Jordan Hake, Dalvor, Vacants, Jason Welch, Andrew Gilbert, The Paleon, Reva, Kaiser Ho, Figgy, Cabbage Pants, Leo, Scott Matthews, Samir and Yaya Legaglow, Rene Dam, Rupinder, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, Relentless Rex, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, James Grimley, Seanathan, Bowser the Dog, Raildor, and Max M. Thank you all so much, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.